Alright, it's what? starting to require. Yeah. So, your guys' mission is to be able to. Everyone watching, there's only me and Ashley here. Oh, so so yeah, but well, like, this is for you guys who like don't want to Wow, I thought you were going to tie it, anyway, yeah. It was really bad, I'm sorry. Why 51 quality plastic forks? So the topic is, should we ban the extra? The strongest arguments I think on the affirmative is domestic violence, control, soft power, crime, and suicide. Zero and since soft power was not good. Okay, so let me explain that, right? So first, let's go on to domestic violence. If you look, if you look at, uh, if you're looking at the latency docs that I have on my case, um, domestic violence is a really strong argument because there's so many warrants that explain why guns lead to higher domestic violence. Like New York Times conducted research, this card is in my case, that spans 25 years, and they show that when there's a gun in the household, domestic violence increases increased by 500%. Now. Now this is like a really strong argument, right? Because you lead into the deaths of innocent females and also the patriarchy. Because the handguns, what handguns essentially do is they make it so that men have control over their wives, and that's bad. Right. So the common refutations to handguns, uh, domestic violence contention, is that first of all, men will just find other ways to abuse their wives. This is a terrible argument, although a very commonly used one. So the easiest way to take out this argument is to say, sure, like abusers will still be abusers, and there will still be people who are criminals, right? But the fact of the matter is that with the handgun inside the household, this just makes conflict deadly. Because whereas conflict would normally not have escalated as quickly, there would be more time to like get this conflict under control, right? Like if there's a handgun in the mix, like immediately all the violence comes deadly, and there's a chance that people end up dead. So that's exactly why we should ban handguns in terms of domestic violence. Another really common refutation that is equally bad is that women use handguns to defend themselves. This actually isn't as common. And they say that women need handguns to defend themselves, right? But this is a terrible argument because it's been so many years, and the fact that men still disproportionately outweigh the number of handgun uh, homicides against women proves that it doesn't matter if women have handguns. The fact of the matter is that it's always the male who is in control in the times with the so, <laughs> oh, and then another argument that is actually more common, but is just as bad, is that a lot of people will say that, oh, because um, because we only talk about women, this is sexist, and it somehow excludes men. But first, this doesn't like take out the offense that we get, right? Like, sure, we're not specifically talking about men, and we're focusing on women, but that's only because women are disproportionately affected by gun violence. And also, the fact of the matter is that women are disproportionately affected by gun violence. So although you can say that this is sexist, like at one point societal welfare will have to outweigh. Because at one point, like especially if the judge is a woman, you have to say, look, it's not about like this like rhetoric about who is being privileged over who. If a certain population is getting disproportionately targeted for abuse, we need to stop that. And hand and bed, hand and bed will solve. If you look to the bottom of the LAC on the first contention, I have an I have empirical solvency. The Stockelberg evidence essentially says that in this one district where they banned handguns, there were zero domestic violence incidents for the next three years, which proves that if you get rid of handguns, not only is the coercion factor for males eliminated, but also conflicts are not going to escalate into deadly violence, but rather more domestic issues that can be dealt with, but you can't deal with situations in when people end up dead. So the second contention in my case, which I think is the strongest in the app, is crime. And within crime, there are two things. First is homicides, second is suicides. Homicides is a really good contention because uh, essentially banning handguns is obviously going to stop homicides, right? Like, I have really good evidence on that. But even better is suicides because literally no one can respond to suicides. The fact of the matter, oh, you know, we'll get to that later. Let's talk about homicides first. So the Violence Policy Center evidence basically says that 86% of all firearm-related crimes are committed with handguns. This gives you immediate solvency and specificity towards handguns and not other assault weapons. Because handguns are more easily concealed and therefore are more likely to be used in crimes. There are also evidence in the BPC that 650,000 cases of suicide and unintentional shootings um, take place within the US, right? This is exactly what you need because you have a number of the number of lives to save. 
you say we ban handguns, we save 650,000 lives. This has nothing to do with homicides because you can count on the fact that the negative will bring up just as bad evidence that says that people are going to be more violent with a handgun ban. But this evidence explicitly preempts this because the evidence says that we are solving unintentional shootings and suicides. So these things are not homicides. So yes, even if they have evidence saying that homicides will go up, suicides and unintentional shootings are the greatest cause of death right now in America, not homicides. So the fact of the matter is that you're solving for more, and this more is 650,000 lives. There's also a really good warrant in there that says that each time a handgun is used in self-defense, it is also used in 1.3 unintentional deaths, 4.6 homicides, and 37 suicides. Great preempt, because a lot of people will run that self-defense means that we decrease crime. This evidence says right here, yes, self-defense does decrease crime, but at what cost? Because empirically, each self-defense act will cause around 50 other deaths that are completely unnecessary. So at one point, you just have to say, people who want self-defense need to suck it up and let law enforcement take care of it, because you're causing 50 times the amount of damage. So the really OG card in this case is La Follette 2K. Because, because La Follette 2K literally has three warrants. The first warrant is that there's going to be culture change. It says that gun bans will change our culture because the ready availability of weapons right now is what is causing our society to be so numb to violence. If we ban guns in the long term, our society changes. Children don't grow up in gun settings, so therefore they become less likely to commit acts of violence. So long term crime statistics show that if there's a culture change, you can solve the crime long term. It will outweigh their short term evidence about crime going up. And no one is able to respond to that warrant, right? Like, it's probably true as well. The second warrant that's really good is that La Follette is a great study. La Follette takes into account both the UN and the UK and proves that countries that have handgun bans have both more social solidarity but also less homicide and suicide deaths. Now this is especially good because a lot of people on NEG like to specify certain cities where handgun bans are allowed and also crime goes up. Say La Follette 2K outweighs because he has an international study which is much bigger and yes, I agree that sometimes violence can be like volatile, right? Like sometimes violence goes up and down for no reason. But La Follette is a 25 year study that holistically captures the fact that on average, crime is definitely decreasing. On the app, you can also say, like even the base of point should just be, if you can't evaluate between the two pieces of evidence, you should simply use common sense. Because if people are using handguns to kill people, if you ban handguns, there will definitely be less deaths, even if you can find other ways. The immediate avenue of homicide is gone. So a lot of really uh, dumb responses to this contention is people like to run with the substitution effect. They say that people will look to rifles, right? But this is a terrible response, and you can respond to it by saying the reason people are not looking towards rifles and shotguns right now, even though these are high-powered weapons, is because you simply cannot conceal them. If you are robbing, robbing a bank, you cannot walk down the street with your twenty, with your like thirty-four inch shotgun in hand, right? You need a concealable weapon, which is why banning handguns makes it impossible for people to commit armed robberies, armed assault, or anything that requires low-key uh, concealable weapons. This means that it's definitely going to be a reducing of these crimes. So, subpoint C basically says that. Um, Okay, yeah, so let's talk about suicides. For this topic, suicides, I think, could be the best contention on the affirmative because suicides are easily unreviewable, right? Like, I don't know how dumb the person has to be to say suicide good. There's no impact terms to suicide, and there's no link term because you can't just say that, oh, there's going to be more suicides after a hunting ban. There's no evidence on that. So let me explain suicides. What suicide says is that a lot of people right now, roughly like 93%, are killing themselves with handguns in a suicide attempt. Evidence shows that handguns are the easiest and most effective way to commit suicide. Other avenues of suicide, such as cutting or poisoning, only has a 3% success rate. Blowing out your brains is definitely the quickest way to die. So what you need to say is that we need to ban handguns so that people who are under things such as depression or other emotional, psychological, and negative effects need to like not be around handguns or else they will have an increased chance of suicide. A lot of people like to respond to suicide with this one you know, with this one recommendation. They say that, oh, people will find other ways to kill themselves, right? But it's fine because my evidence explicitly says that there's only a 3% success rate for other avenues of suicide, like cutting and poisoning. And also, 
A lot of psychological evidence shows that suicides are not autonomous. And what this means is that after sur surveying the survivors of suicides, people find that the survivors make up their mind to kill themselves one hour before they actually kill themselves. This is extremely problematic. This is extremely problematic because we are not looking towards people who have made up their minds that they no longer want to live. We are looking at people who have short-term depression symptoms or psychological effects that make them suddenly have impulse control. So having a gun in the mix will make the situation deadly and will increase the chance that someone will make a mistake, which is essentially killing themselves. Under utilitarian weighing, there's no way you can lose because as long as you're alive, there's always a chance that you're going to be experiencing happiness in the future. Suicide is the ultimate worst. It cuts the it cuts the end to everything and makes it so that you will never be able to experience any form of pleasure again in the future. It's also a really powerful contention because the BBC evidence says that 650,000 people are killing themselves with handguns. So, oh, by the way, on the suicide argument, never ever try to debate that a suicide is good. B, it's their own fault for taking their lives or anything like that on yeah, such a sensitive thing. And, and I guess this is a really abusive reason why like suicide would be a good argument is that any kind of impact turns makes you seem really, really BM. Yeah. But just like ethically, you don't want to debate that anyway. So if you run suit, it's like really the only way to negate suicide is just to like try to outweigh it. You never try to do an impact turn on it. You can also make a logical argument about suicide that like, I know the impulse argument exists for the sides about why guns would encourage suicide, but you yeah. say if someone's to the point of suicide, they would find alternative means anyways, right? Uh -huh. Even if it's not a gun. Yeah. Well, That's like a reasonable response. I know that they responsible by saying su suicide impulse, right? Yeah. But at the point where someone is in that state, it's inevitable, right? They would find exactly. alternative ways to do it. Yeah, so the good reputations for suicides, which I personally have not seen yet, is that suicide, first of all, is a psychological problem, not a materialistic problem, which means that just because you ban the avenues of suicide, people are still in the psychological state of depression, which means that they still want to kill themselves. Not really a sub substantive response, but lay judges will really buy that because it's a true argument. The second response is that a handgun is definitely not the easiest way to kill yourself or the most painless because um, literally, like like Liren just told me, right? Like there are so many ways to kill yourself. You can go to any party city. The accessibility is crazy. Buy a helium tank and breathe in the helium and you will die and you won't feel anything. Go into your car garage, turn on your car, close the garage door. You will also die without feeling anything. You can bring up these logical arguments in the round and say, look, I know they have evidence saying that you're increasing suicide by having guns around, but look to the logical arguments that if the person is really at the state where he wants to kill himself, if he has a gun or not is completely irrelevant. Sure, it's a defensive argument, but in this case, to deal with suicides, you will need to first put on defense and then try to outweigh. Minimizing the 650,000 deaths the app starts out with is key because if they actually get access to all 650,000 lives saved, it's going to be very hard to win the round. So let's look onto the third contention on the app case. There's a soft power contention, right? Now, soft power may not be the most convincing argument at a late tournament, but I've actually run it with good success. It's all about how you explain. So instead of using rhetoric like soft power, maybe talk about like international modeling or like US as a leader. Because as a leader, we need to other we need other countries to follow us. We need other countries to see our goals as legitimate. So the Friedland 13 of International Affairs card is really good, right? Because it says that each time an individual is able to vent rage killing innocents, it makes America's example fade. And when our example fades, we are not able to make the coalitions or gather the allies that we need. Personally, I think that soft power is a fine argument, especially because it doesn't take a lot of time to run. All you have to say, it, it, it's the link is essentially crime. If you win the link to crime, you're going to win the link to soft power. Because increase of crime means decrease of soft power. It means that countries don't take you as seriously, or that countries want to stay away from you because they don't want to form coalitions with a country that is viewed as a basket case or unstable. So. If you run soft power though, you have to explain exactly how our influence and how our image affects what we do worldwide. The, I, the main reason why people don't buy soft power is because like they don't understand how like just because we have a good image we can do things on the international stage. So you have to explain that. Um, that's generally how you can win soft power. And I think another way that you can bolster the soft power argument or a reason why I think it's unbelievable initially it's a lot because of the fact that it's sort of generic. You're saying that it's going to increase like the perception of the United States and our international influence. But I don't know if there's a card, but there was a card that says like uniquely the issue of gun control, right, is an issue about 
like international modeling or why gun control might be important for developing our influence, that would be better than just a generic soft power scenario that says that if we solve this, the perception of us will increase, right? It's true. And that's why the, the, the response to soft power, because even novices and people in the, in the league tournament do run it, is that first of all, soft power is not something that is controlled on gun control, right? So the answer to soft power is that, look, tons of things affect our soft power in ways a thousand times more important than gun control. Our, our views on global warming, our actions in the Middle East, the U.S. policies that we enact that affect other nations, those are the things that really affect our soft power, not gun control that varies from city to city. Like that thing in itself, no one's going to have actual evidence saying, look, ban guns means soft power grows. Like sure, it grows, but to what degree, right? Like they will never have the bright line to how much soft power needs to grow to form coalitions. Also, I heard a really good turn on the soft power contention, if anyone wants to find the card. What? But the logical argument is just as good, right? Because the turn on soft power is that right now, all the countries, a lot of countries, don't look in favor of gun control, right? You can say that right now, like many of the countries in the Middle East don't like, don't like gun control. They feel that it's the people's right of self-defense. So if we do increase gun control, that's going to make other countries separate from us because they don't want to be a part of a country that doesn't share their same goals and same mind. So EU and UK both have your actual right, but like so what? We already have coalitions with them. We're already pretty tight with them. We need to be focusing on the Middle East and the parts the world we have not yet formed alliances with, and they definitely do not see gun control no way in the same way that we do. That's so insane. So, to summarize the app, the app strategy should be with those three contentions, the ask strategy is to kick soft power because it's not necessarily something you want to go in the final focus, but it's a nice flashy argument that your opponent will spend time on and go straight for suicides and crime. If your opponent is really good and has really good blocks on suicide and crime, kick those and go for domestic violence and you can impact it to the patriarchy. You can say that, look, banning handguns is empirically uh, proven to solve domestic violence. Domestic violence causes a link to the patriarchy and puts men in a perspective of power. You need to end that right now because structural violence is terrible, especially those towards genders, right? But the most classic example, your opponent probably will not respond to crime and suicides well, and you need to extend crime. You need to say, look, La Follette 2K is a professor from St. Petersburg, and he does international studies for 25 years. The negative evidence will probably be something from Kate's or some like gun article that no one's ever heard of. You have to say that my research definitely outweighs. The negative often does not understand the methodology of their own uh, of their own evidence. The methodology of La Follette is very clear. International professor, 25 years, studies international communities in both the UK and the EU and comes to conclusions he's also been published by numerous resources we can definitely trust trust La Follette and his, his studies are definitely the best and they will probably drop the culture change warrant and the crime warrant and he, if anything extend suicide say that only the app can solve for suicides and suicides cause like massive death that should not be caused because these are tragic suicide uh, tragic suicide scenarios not people who are bent on killing themselves and we need to try to stop this as much as possible because Suicide is terrible when we don't take So, is, um, that is the app case. So, let's move on to the NEG case. The NEG case yeah, is a little harder in this topic, in my opinion. However, I think that one of the best negative contentions is indeed, um, is indeed black markets. Not a lot of people have good responses on black markets, and a lot of people don't really know how the black market argument works. So you need to both know how the black market, market argument works and know how to impact it. So first, the black market contention is pretty clear, right? So uh, black case, So this is the NC swag. Uh, on the Dropbox. Not sure if it's exactly. Maybe, maybe there's another one, but I'm looking at this one right now. So, Jacobs 2, this is the evidence on NC swag, right? So what Jacobs 2 essentially says is that when you have prohibition, you will immediately have a black market. It's not hard to win this link. It's simple supply and demand economics. If you lower the supply, uh, and, and the demand goes up, supply will go up, and if you can't do it through legal avenues, you will do it through illegal avenues. And this is comparatively worse. You have to stress the net, uh, the net impact of this. This is comparatively worse because illegal markets do not operate under any regulatory scheme, which means that in the status quo, when there are, uh, when there are sellings of guns, 
We can control this. We can have purchasing licenses. We can have governments control how many guns go out. After an illegal market pops up, it will be completely impossible to regulate, and it will make it so that even teenagers can get guns. The common empirical example is Chicago. In Chicago, there was a gun prohibition, and because of it, the black market rose to, to degrees so great that now, law officials, quote, it is as easy to buy a gun on the street as it is to buy a class here. Teenagers, officials, everyone has guns. They can get it through any means, and the legal the legal controls have zero control over what's going on. And you can say that if you ban guns, this will become not a Chicago scenario, but a U.S. scenario, where now guns are uh, are proliferating uh, everywhere. This is really good. It turns the entire affirmative case because almost all affirmative cases rely on the fact that there will be a decrease of guns and therefore a decrease of gun violence. If you prove that a black market will emerge and then boom, that turns their entire case because not only will there not be a decrease in guns, there will be an increase in guns. And not only an increase in guns, an increase of illegal guns that cannot be tracked or regulated in any way. Okay, why don't you black markets have like four million other countries? Sorry? Why haven't black markets like, you know, been as extreme in like other places, like other countries where they Because the United States is unique in that first of all we have a huge gun market already, which is why the black market's easier to form. And secondly, like given our proximity to countries like like it, it's the truth, like countries like to the south like Mexico, they offer really easy avenues of like smuggling stuff in, right? Like the reason why we also have things like a rampant drug problem is because like countries more in the south are like really good easy avenues for black markets. So combine that with the fact that we'll have a higher demand for guns, then like we're going to see a rise in violence, especially since like um, in America, like let's assume they don't run the Lafayette evidence, then you still have the mindset of guns. So that gives rise to black markets. Whereas in other countries where they've had like gun bans for an exceptionally long time, like they've been able to transition a little bit better. But in the United States, especially like, even if you don't want to go long term, even just in the short term, you cause so much violence and so much of the black market is going to go up that the United States is unique in that, in that respect, right? So it's just a combination of our size and like uh, how easy it is to smuggle things into the US. Because it really is, right? Like we pretty much do every single like minute something's being smuggled in. <laughs> yeah, so. A little more work on the link is that Case 82 gives you an example of what this black market looks like, right? So the black market is essentially people can just go to Home Depot and make guns for about $15. And um, That's true. they will be perfectly functional. So this is why the black market will be so explosive because anyone can work for it. People who don't have jobs, people who are going through struggling times, you can go to Home Depot, spend $15, and Case 82 explicitly talks about how there will be a 500% profit margin, which means that there will be thousands of entrepreneurs willing to risk like a few fines to make these illegal guns that probably couldn't be tracked anyway and make a 500% there, profit. It's actually really popular for people to build their own because the individual parts are actually really easy to get. I mean like there's no age requirement, there's nothing. You like ask that you can make his own pistol if you wanted to, right? It's actually not that hard. But the thing is, is that when you make it yourself, it doesn't have a registration number. Right, so actually there is a practice of making your own and burying it in your backyard because then like uh, the, the theory is that if there is a handgun ban and like all handguns are confiscated, they have to go by registration numbers, right? Because that's our only record who has it. So if you make your own and you hide in the backyard, they have no chance of finding it. And that just only contributes to the rise of the black market because then suddenly those unregistered guns get so much more valuable. But you can still build them exceptionally easily. Like the parts are actually easy to make by yourself as well. So you don't need a manufacturer, especially in the United States. Like everyone's a gunsmith. Yeah, so the impact of black markets is huge, right? In the NC Swag Docs, there are impact NC cards talking swag. about how black markets are going to fund terrorism organizations. Tens of millions is the rough estimate, although it is conservative. Also, you really want to go for black markets because you're going to prove that there's going to be an increase in the number of guns in the U.S. as as the supply of legal guns goes down. Definitely turns case because if more guns means more crime. That's the entire affirmative thesis. In the negative strategy, this needs to be the first argument you try to go for. Because crime is one of the biggest advantages or disadvantages that can be proved in today's round. So the next argument that I think is extremely compelling is the argument of self-defense. So on the negative, I understand that you're probably fighting an uphill battle in terms of crime. However, there's actually very good evidence there talking about how why having guns would reduce crime, right? So basically, lot 01. 
talks about how he has numerous studies that indicate that there's a decrease in crime. And although Lot is indeed being called under question by some of his colleagues, I think that the warrant is still there, right? So there are many other authors in this in this box about why we would decrease crime. So average citizens decrease crime. The Cates 13 evidence is really great on this. And Don B. Cates is also a PhD, super duper qualified. So what Cates does is he spends one year surveying juvenile criminals and criminals in general. And all the criminals admit that they are more scared of homeowners with weapons than they are the police. And the warrant is that smugglers, burglars, people who commit homicide want helpless victims, not people, not a gunfight. They want a nice quick cash uh, or like a nice quick check. They don't want to have a gunfight with someone who is armed. And the empirical studies also prove, because I have not evidence, that basically uses Britain as, as the empirical example, right? So Britain essentially monopolizes force. Only the police can have guns. And there is a huge increase in crime right now in Britain because everyone lives in fear. And so specific surveys in Britain show that the criminals who operate under Britain's law are they, they basically walk around with no fear because they know that no one can defend themselves, whereas burglars in America all admit to fear armed homeowners more than the police. And the final uh, link evidence basically says that, um, yeah, so the final evidence is also really good because the warrant says that terrorists and like hardcore criminals are looking to attack places where they know people are unarmed. Which means that if the app bans guns, this will only increase the number of places where they know people are unarmed. Look toward the, towards the Aurora incident, the Paris attack, or all the mall shootings or the school shootings. These shootings take place in places where the criminal knows that people will not be able to defend themselves. There's a reason criminals aren't like bombing ter uh, military bases or like they're not trying to like shoot up military like uh, military squadrons, right? Because these people can defend themselves and they don't want the gunfight. So in a way, yes, the warrant is there that concealed carry can solve. As far as the empirical group, besides Britain, I think that's the best you're going to get. However, I think it's important to have these contentions because you don't want to give the affirmative 100% access to the crime scenario. Sure, you have the black markets contention, but I think that it's important to add on a little more to black markets and say that armed civilians can also be an effective tool to mitigate crime. The point is, is that even if your argument doesn't essentially outweigh their crime, yeah. you really, really want to try your best to at least mitigate the number of like crimes that they say they're going to cause, right? Because at that point, your other arguments can outweigh, but you need this offense because if they get 100% access to crime and they get 100% access to like black market stuff, like you're done, mate. Exactly. Exactly. And so on the negative, it is also extremely important to be able to turn AF contentions. That is going to be, because the neg doesn't have enough substance to stand alone, right? You want to be able to turn the AF's case. So the com most common AF arguments is, of course, domestic violence, crime, soft power. So mostly let's talk about domestic violence, because there are a lot of good arguments on neg for domestic violence. So the fact of the matter is, the first response to domestic violence is that, look, this, this policy of viewing women as somehow vulnerable to men is only going to increase the stereotype that women are the ideal target. So there's evidence in the Dropbox that basically says that when you see women as needing paternal protection from men, that only increases the stereotype and makes them out to be even bigger targets. The second response that leads into this is that guns can be an equalizer for men and women, right? It's a little bit of a blippy argument, but it might be true, especially when I have the evidence that says that women are more and more, the population of women who buy concealed carry handguns are growing, maybe even doubling in the last three years. And this is like to protect against many things like sexual assault and rape. But the fact of the matter is because of this, we can see that in the future, this like domestic violence is not gonna happen anymore because men don't have all the guns anymore, right? Like women are the population that's starting to acquire more of these weapons. And this deadly force is going to solve for domestic violence better than these paternalistic policies. Because when women fight back against men, this is an active deconstruction of the patriarchy. We no longer see women as submissive beings or like objects that can just be completely like like overlooked, right? That can be controlled at will. When women fight back with deadly force, it becomes media coverage that deconstructs the patriarchy that women are somehow submissive and inferior to men. And the third response to domestic violence is that it's more of an analytical, logical warrant that you really want to say in front of lay judges. You have to say, look, the reason domestic violence happens is not because there is a handgun. 
The reason domestic violence takes place is because men have psychological problems and they're abusers who need medical treatment. Banning handguns does not solve their ill-minded uh, psychological effects. Like only actual like rehabilitation processes can solve this. So say the app isn't going to do anything about this. And yeah, so on the negative, your answer to crime should be, in terms of strategy, your negative strategy should first be go for black markets. Because if you win black markets, you're probably going to win the round. But also, you should win that armed civilians are effective in terms, in terms of decreasing crime. Because the fact of the matter is that when criminals know that homeowners are armed, they're going to be less likely to attack, right? This warrant is like basically undestructible. The app can only respond with empirics. So you need to be very clear in your speech that just because you have empirics, just because you have empirics with a warrant means that we cannot look towards your empirics because my warrant makes more logical sense. Because there can be like a bunch of correlation or a bunch of factors that affect your statistics, right? Like, let's look towards it in logic, logical sense. If, if burglars know that all the homeowners are armed or that the people that they are attacking have a chance of fighting back with equal force, they're going to be less likely to instigate this violence.